So uh, one of the critical questions that we as a scientist uh, have to address is why we still didn't succeed to translate our basic knowledge of brain structure and function to treatment of brain disorders. Professor Richard uh, Frakoviak already explained about our urgent medical need in these treatments of different kinds of brain disorders. And during the last 10 years, no single drug has been improved for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia. Neuroscientists around the world, including this, uh, uh, our speakers, contributed a lot to understand the basic principles of synaptic, neuronal, and brain function. However, despite a huge effort, we still didn't find a solution how to fix the broken brain. And the question is, why? As you can imagine, each one of us have different questions, different answers to this question, depending on our philosophy, background, education, and so on. I was trained as a synaptic physiologist by the late Professor Itzhak Parnas in Hebrew University. And uh, uh, here are the key questions that I believe we have to solve in order to be able to fix the brain. The first question is how to understand, uh, we have to understand how properties and behavior of single synapses, the tiny connections between neuronal cells shape the properties of neuronal circuits. Obviously, the modeling will help, but we still don't understand principles in order to build a right model, to my opinion. Second, we need to understand how to regulate the brain plasticity. Remember, brain plasticity is essential to adapt uh, to changes in environment. Charles um, <clears throat> Darwin wrote, it's not um, the strongest of the species that survives, it's not the most intelligent that survives, it's the most adaptable who survives. Okay? So if we want to fix the brain problem, we have to understand the mechanisms of metaplasticity in our brain. We have to understand how to preserve brain homeostasis from one side and enhance computational capacity of the brain from the other side. And finally, I believe we need to understand the transition mechanism from physiology to pathology, from healthy brain to sick brain. When I started my laboratory six years ago in Tel Aviv University, I asked myself a simple question. How do we validate the answers to the question I just recently addressed? Or it boils down just to a philosophical, classical question, what does understanding mean? And they done already addressed it. So I would like to cite um, Richard Feynman, who wrote the answer which is really close to my philosophy. He wrote, what I cannot create, I cannot understand. For me, understanding means the ability to create neuronal networks with defined phenomena, with defined properties. We already are able to just grow brain in the dish. We are able to grow a simple neuronal network. And if we really understand the principles, we should be able to convert non-plastic network to the plastic one, a stupid one to the smart one. And the second layer of validation is to prove these basic principles that we discovered in the simple neuronal networks in reversing of brain disorders, in reversing of synaptic function, dysfunctions and neuronal dysfunctions in, in these brain disorders. I believe in order to uh, identify the cause of brain disorders, we have to identify physiological mechanisms and molecules which are involved in this initiation. And, and now it's a great time to do it due to enormous development, enormous technological development in optogenetics, imaging, in uh, molecular biology. When we started and entered Alzheimer's disease field six years ago, I was almost alone with this approach. I figured out that the most of research in Alzheimer's disease field is focused on pathology. 
100 years ago, Bavarian psychiatrist Alzheimer identified amyloid plaques, these famous plaques, in his patient. During this last 100 years, enormous amount of effort has been spent to understand the formation of this plaque and the aggregation processes. However, not everyone in our field really want to face the fact that there is no correlation between these pathological hallmarks of the disease and cognitive dysfunctions. And uh, we still really don't know, understand, the primary cause of majority of the brain disorders. But based on the recent uh, research, we do believe that synaptic dysfunctions, synaptic failure and loss are the cause of the majority of these disorders. To address this question, it is necessary to understand the relationship between brain activity, right, and predisposition to dementia and its progression. Currently, the majority of research is focused on identifying molecular mechanisms irrespective of brain activity and synaptic function. And I believe we have to emerge this two domain knowledge, brain physiology and molecular pathology, in order to solve this problem. Critical analysis is a nice and essential thing, right? But it's not sufficient, so what? did we contribute to solve this problem? My laboratory is focuses, as I already told, in transition from physiological to pathological state. During the last several years, we identified the physiological function of the main component of Alzheimer's disease brain, amyloid beta. We found that this molecule is essential to maintain high number of functional synapses in a proper state, these synapses are optimized in transmission of high-frequency spike bursts, which are essential, essential for memory processes. We also identified the first step, which caused synaptic defunction, which is hyperactivity of basal state of synapses. And after this, many laboratories, as the laboratories around the world, supported uh, this finding. For example, now we know that in mild cognitive impairment, the state which precedes, in many cases, Alzheimer's disease, it's a hyperactivation of the hippocampus, very important brain region, which is involved in memory and cognitive functions. And finally, we did find specific patterns of brain activities which cause change in molecular composition of amyloid beta. And we do now can predict based on our basic work in brain slices, how changes in these patterns can cause synaptic dysfunction in sporadic Alzheimer's disease. And I really hope that in the next 10 years, we will be able to translate this base knowledge and to bring and the real solution. Thank you.